this in a sea of the dying and shameless uh, A sea of the aimless, I don't wanna be one of the nameless I'ma wake up with the mindset I'm Yele And I'm Patrick JP Adventures 19. Welcome back to a new episode. Because we don't have enough projects going, we started another one. <laughs> so I am cutting all the decking boards. These are the leftovers pretty much from the, from the deck. I'm cutting to them to the right length and they will go inside our stairs. <laughs> and Patrick is working on... What am I working on, Yelle? On the stairs box. Oh, wow. He's working on the stairs box. Which is also looking, looking a lot better now. I'll show you. Look at this. Modern art. <laughs> we tried to use all the offcuts that we had left. This is the box. We don't have a lid yet. And this is the part that's gonna slide out with the stairs in there. And now back to cutting more wood. I actually enjoy it. This is what they look like. So now it's fine tuning and then we have to route off the edges underneath where the little welds are. So it is quite similar to the wooden battens inside our box. If you look at this, there's one weld. It's tiny and not as thick as the ones inside the camper box. You can see better on this side. And yeah, so we set the router hopefully <laughs> to the right position and I'm gonna try the first one, see how we go. I'm gonna oil them with the same decking oil we used for our deck. There we go. This is the bottom of the board, so the board's facing down that you won't see as much. And then when once that's dry, I'm gonna do the top side. later I recoated the bottom side again and now I flip them all over put them on the bar like this so I can actually oil the sides as well because the short sides are done the bottom is done and now I'm gonna do this side the long sides and the top so this side has to look really good because that's what's gonna go on here and everyone can see it Look at them, we love this wood and especially when it's oiled with the stacking oil that gives it a matte finish. And I marked all of them, I put numbers on them so I know exactly where to put them because um, yeah, they, they wouldn't all fit every single step so yeah, it's all marked so I know where to put every single one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> uh, 
and while the boards have to dry um, I'll jump back into the box and I'll drill more holes and screw more of the timber battens in because we are doing the corners right now and then we only have to build one more frame for the rear aircon and we can start insulating the walls, the ceiling that will be really cool because that will change the whole look of the box Good morning! So we did a bit of a night action yesterday and look at this, we put the overhang on. So this is just temporary, we will have to take it off again. But we had the original plan of mounting it with all those screws and 12, and 12 bolts all around. But now we might change our setup again we love changing things. Um, we were thinking about putting on hinges at the top so we could pretty much just flip it up like this and don't, we don't have to take the whole thing off um, which would make it a lot easier and we would still keep the M12 bolts at the bottom to keep it in place and tighten it and secure it as well. Yeah we're thinking about that so not sure we'll see. And yeah we screwed in all of them in the corners so they're good to go. We didn't do the top one yet because we weren't sure if we were gonna weld on the nuts, which was the original plan. Probably we won't weld them on, so we can actually screw them in as well. And therefore we have to adapt the other side. Because we only cut this to the length until the bolts. And so this part is pretty much missing above it. So I have to cut this. Then we have to cut off the edge of that one again because it would overlap. <laughs> yeah, always something. And because we got up quite early, uh, we've been working already. And I'll quickly show you our progress. Patrick is still working on our stairs box and the sliding mechanism. How's it going, Patrick? Yeah, so this is the box. And Patrick's working on that. And I continued working on our stairs, on the steps. Um, the oil was dry, we let it dry yesterday evening and overnight. And I already did a, all of them except for one. So now I'll show you how I did it. But it's pretty much the same process like with the decking boards on our deck. Let's go. They will get oiled again, but once they're installed, not before. Because um, what I learned when oiling the deck, once it's installed, you still have to modify stuff or um, they get scratches along the way um, while installing them. So yeah, they'll get another coat, but in like once everything's working. Good morning! Um, it's Thursday and it's bucketing down like at night it was insane and so no one's working today we can't pick and we are using this day to go to Bunbury to get some stuff done because working on the mark and the rain isn't much fun anyways and yeah we were thinking about we need to get some wood um, but then we realized we don't have a van anymore so it doesn't fit inside and we can't carry around wood outside and then it will get super wet and needs like days to get dry again so yeah we'll see what we can do how much we can actually fit into the little um canopy in the back and yeah let's go we'll take you with us so we already stopped at the post office and we actually had two really exciting parcels waiting for us we will show you later all right now we are at Gibrock trade center and Patrick just came back because I'm waiting in the car and told me that they have airfoil insulation left. Um, yeah, which is pretty cool. So we're gonna get one packet of it 
which will be plenty and should definitely be enough for the rest of the build. It's 60 bucks, so slightly more expensive than Bunnings, but that's all right. <laughs> At least we found some, because it's literally out of stock everywhere. So yeah, I'm now waiting for Patrick. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Look at this. I got some more presents. Woohoo! Finally. So it's been more than two hours since uh, we ate breakfast. So of course, yeah, they couldn't last another 30 minutes without food. So, what did we have to get, Yele? I'm not sharing. <laughs> You're right. They're both vegan, Patrick. You're right. You're funny. <laughs> we made it back from Bunbury and we'll show you what was inside our parcel. Surprises! Alright, our first parcel for the hoodie and the t-shirt from Sidetrack Australia and they're actually really cool and comfy. We love them. Love it, yep. Thank you. <laughs> and yeah. the second one is a very special parcel with yeah. a very interesting surprise that many of you may not have seen coming. We are putting underfloor heating in our Unimog. <laughs> yeah, this mount might sound a bit weird. But um, it's actually quite simple and we'll show you everything about it and yeah, if you want to do it as well, you can just get in touch with us. <laughs> so the company we're working with on underfloor heating is called Cold Buster Underfloor Heating and um, they sent us this parcel with uh, a bunch of really, really cool stuff. So um, they sent us a heated towel rail as well, so we're putting that in our bathroom, which is going to be... Awesome yeah. to dry towels when it's cold outside. And then we have the underfloor heating kit. And many of you may think underfloor heating is, you know, this complex system of putting in poly pipes uh, in like these S shapes and, you know, putting a cement screed over it and then you can't ever get to it again. But it's actually really, really simple these days. It's literally just an electric, almost like a blanket. So it's just a mesh with a heated wire that runs through it and you just lay that out and uh, Cold Buster makes ideal um, products for like a van or a bus conversion because it's just one like roll that you roll out and if you wanted to do like a, a larger area you just cut the end of the roll like at one spot and then you like flip it around and it comes back the other way but in a bus or a van you usually only have one center aisle so you just take this roll and you roll it out in the center aisle and you've got underfloor heating. It's super yeah. simple. We'll show you. So it's quite small, the packaging, which is really nice. And here you can see what the roll looks like. And this is the way you can lay it out. So you can turn it 90 degrees or rotate it or just... You can't flip it. because yeah. So the, the, there's one hot wire that runs through it in like an S shape. And you can only cut the mesh, you can't cut the wire, yeah. you can only cut the mesh and then you pretty much cut the mesh where the wire ends and then you flip it so the wire keeps going at that, in that direction or you can turn it 90 degrees or yeah, yeah, here there, there's, some... there's lots of installation examples and uh, the guys at Cold Busters, Ben the installation manager is super helpful if you have any questions of how to do it in your van, they can definitely help you out. They know exactly what they're doing, they've done this a million times before. Um, never in a van or a mobile application. Let's open the package. All right, wire tester. And this is all it is. Mm -hmm. it's just four meters of mesh. So you can see the mesh is this just plastic mesh. And then this yellow wire is the hot wire. And there's your cold tail. So that's what you connect to power. Yeah, pretty cool. But, um,. We will definitely show you how to install it, how we install it, what we put on top of it, um, also the towel rail and we will obviously use it while traveling and then yeah, you'll get to know everything about it and if you want to get it yourself, you can just get in touch with us or with Cold Buster. And this is the little thermostat that we are going to be installing. Yep, so this is uh, like a... It's not a programmable one, so you can't use it with smart home, but we don't have Wi-Fi in the Unimog and we're not planning on putting it in yet. So um, this is just to control pretty much the underfloor heating. You set the temperature and it just keeps the floor at that same temperature. 
Yeah, pretty cool. And it's white, which matches our style in the box. And now let's get back to work. <laughs> we have to get some more stuff done inside the camper box and some steel work for Patrick. So let's get into it. So Yella is measuring out how much earth will we need for... What are we doing, Yella? We're insulating the wall. <laughs> so we're just pushing it, it is pushing it in between. And there it goes. <laughs> so yeah, we've got one that's a bit wider than our gap. That's not good, we have to cut it, Patrick. It's too long. Too wide. Too wide. Alright, so look at this. It does make a huge difference. So we um, did those three gaps and now I'm gonna put the vapor barrier up because it's not as wide as the three gaps and then we'll see. <laughs> we learn as we go. Alright guys, back in the box. I started with the vapor barrier. So here we go. We have marked where the steel SHSs are. So right here next to the wood and here as well. We drew little arrows, arrows, whatever. Um, and now I'm um, sealing everything with the insulation tape. So there is no airflow going on. It's all sealed up. And yeah, that's what I'm doing. It takes some time to get it around the buttons and SHS and to make it really airtight everywhere. But yeah, we're getting there. All right, this part is done. Look at it, all taped up and now I'm gonna work on this area. I can't do it all the way to the top because there are still bolts. As you can see here as well, and we are gonna get rid of the bolts actually because we are changing the this mounting design of the overhang. So as soon as they're gone, I can screw in the piece that goes here, the wooden batten, and then the one here. And then we can actually insulate the top as well. But until then, I have to skip this part and I'm just going to work on the lower part. Yeah, that's the plan. So let's get into it. We are going to install a air intake to create positive pressure inside the box when we're on dirt roads for example. So we will still have to cut a hole probably around there. So I'm leaving that for now. The same with this corner. There is a bolt that's holding down the box onto the tray and we want to be able to access it. So I'm not going to do this corner yet either. And yeah, I'm not sure which one I'm gonna do next, probably this side, right here. And then I have to frame the crawl through and those little hatches into the overhang um, so we can insulate this wall as well. It is getting dark, but look at the sky. It's beautiful. Um, and yeah, we have another project going or that we're continuing. Um, Patrick's working on it right now. I'll show you. It is our roof rack and brush bars. <laughs> I 
We finally bent that piece that goes around the snorkel top. So it's... And it looks like... Ooh. <laughs> it looks like this. It's gonna go around here and then there will be a connection between that bent and the top of it. Yeah. So we have to weld that on. And then we could actually cut that piece and paint it if it's not raining. <laughs> So the bar work for the snorkel is on. Patrick welded that on last night. And now we're getting the frame ready for painting. So it doesn't ever rust again the way it rusted. <laughs> yeah. Look at this, we'll, ra we'll have to rust from the Patrick. Is that gonna be your job? No, I'm working inside the box. <laughs> Bye, have fun. Thanks, yeah, for all your help. Alright guys, this is it for this week's episode. We really hope we can get more of the insulation done next week and also get the roof rack and brush bars installed because that will look so cool. Also, Patrick is working every day on our stairs and the stair design. So we hope we can give you an update on that as well. See you all next week. I'm